Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be building a DIY electric mini budget skateboard. Unlike most of our other videos, which feature highly specced out but very expensive DIY electric skateboards, this video will focus on how to build a budget mini electric longboard for anyone looking to get started in building their own electric skateboard or anyone looking for a compact budget option that would rather build than buy. So the first part that you're going to need are some 90mm ABEC clones which you can buy on Amazon. Here we have the pink ones shown because those are the ones we put on this board but while filming we used these purple ones because we had two of the same boards being built. The first thing that you're going to want to do to these wheels is with a drill, drill through the spokes to allow the wheel pulley to bolt on which is this 36 tooth ABEC wheel pulley from M Boards. This particular wheel pulley is a bolt on pulley because these are the cheapest options for budget builds. And the first thing you're going to want to do is align this outer retaining ring with the pegs and then slide all of the bolts through those holes that you just made with the drill. You'll then be able to align all of these screws with the screws on the actual pulley itself and then screw all of those long screws through the spokes and then into the threads on the pulley. Using a drill or driver with the proper hex bit will be very helpful for this process since the screws are long. Make sure to top it off with a hand allen key wrench and your wheel pulley is bolted to your wheel just like that. The trucks that we are going to be using are these M Boards Caliber 2 style clone trucks. These trucks are a great option because they work like caliber trucks, but they are a little bit cheaper. And the mount we're using is the Boardnamics Idler Pulley Tensioner Mount, which works on Caliber 2 trucks. So the first thing you're going to want to do is use the clamp part of the mount and bolt it through onto the truck. Take the long screws provided and slide them through the holes and then put the nut on the other side and tighten it until the mount is clamped strongly to the truck. Next, we put the bearings inside of the ABEC clone wheels. So the first thing you do is slide the bearing onto the truck and then press the wheel firmly onto the axle, flip the hanger onto its side and then press firmly down and the bearing will just pop right into place. To get the other bearing in, do the same thing except after placing the bearing on, place on a spacer and then pop it right into place. Before clamping the motor mount fully on, we like doing a little mock-up so that we can figure out how we want everything to fit. So to do this, we mount the motor onto our motor mount and then kind of briefly fit it. This way we can know exactly where we want to clamp the clamping portion of our motor mount on. Now, knowing the exact location that we needed to place the clamp on the hanger, we were able to use the Allen key and the wrench to crank it all the way down and hold it in place firmly. We then attached the motor plate to the clamp portion of the mount by using the M4 bolts and nuts provided. These four bolts allow you to change the angle at which you want your motor plate mounted to your truck, which you can adjust once you actually put the truck on your deck, so it's not crucial that these are fully tight. Next, we started to mount the front wheels onto the front truck. First place a speed ring, then take the flat side of your ABEC clone wheel, make sure the round side is on the outside, slide it onto the wheel, which can be a little bit tricky if your spacer gets in the way. Next, put on another speed ring and then finish it off by putting on an axle nut. Once you've repeated this process for both sides, use a T-tool to secure the axle nut all the way onto the wheel so that it can still rotate, but so that it won't vibrate. Now moving back to the drivetrain, the next thing that you'll want to do is to place the keyway into the shaft of our motor, which we haven't said by the way is a 6354 190 kV motor from Flipsky. The motor pulley we are using is also from Flipsky and is an HTD5 15mm wide motor pulley made from aluminum. It's a tight fit, but it should slide right on the motor shaft with the keyway. The belt we are using is a 315mm HTD5 belt, which we got from Polybelt. This belt is especially long because of the motor mount we are using requires a pretty long belt. So the first step is to slide the belt over the axle on the pulley, and then what we did was to put on 3-4 to four of these spacers, that way the wheel pulley doesn't hit the actual motor mount itself. This is just a design flaw because we can't mount the motor mount any farther back. If we were to do it again, we would surely use a different mount or wheel pulley. The next thing that we're going to do is mount the idler tensioner pulley into the motor mount itself so that we can regulate the tension on this belt. The tensioner is held into place using one of these bolts and a nut on the other side with the spacer. Simply just slide it into the slot until you have the proper tension, which should be such that you don't have a belt that slips, but not so tight that your belt is rock hard. Finish it up by screwing the screw all the way in so that the idler tensioner is clamped into the mount. At this point, we've got a fully functioning rear mono drive drivetrain. Having a mono drive won't have as much power as a dual, but having one motor will significantly save you money. 
Moving on to electronics, the first thing that we're going to be showing is the loop key. So instead of buying a power switch, which can cost up to $40 to $50, we decided that we'd make our own by using a loop key. So here's the layout. We have a side going into the battery and then going into the VESC and then a break in it, which will be plugged in by shorting the loop key. The battery we are using is a 6S2P30Q pack from Mboards and it plugs into one of the ends of the loop key. The VESC that we are going to be using is the Torque Boards Torque ESC, which is just a VESC. This part plugs into the opposing end of our loop key. You can see here that there's a break in the positive wire that goes in between the battery and the VESC, which acts as a break in the circuit. When the anti-spark XT90 that is shorted plugs in here, the circuit is completed, allowing current to flow, and then turns on the board. While a loop key works extremely well, I would definitely recommend buying a power switch if you have a little bit of extra money. Our VESC uses 5mm bullet connectors, whereas the motor uses 4 so we had to take off those on the VESC and add some 4mm connectors to it by simply soldering them. Soldering bullet connectors is quite simple, so this is an easy fix. You'll also want to make sure that you use an X-Acto knife or a blade to open up all of your connector ports on your VESC since the Torque ESC does come with some coverings. You'll then be able to plug in your 4mm bullet connectors from the motor into the VESC. And then also make sure to add your sensor wire with a sensor wire adapter into the sensor wire port on the VESC so you can run your VESC in censored FOC mode. So that's a quick summary of how the electronics are wired. At this point, the only thing you have left to do is plug in the receiver, which you'll end up doing later after you've programmed the VESC and built everything already. We're obviously gonna take this apart and put it in the enclosure after we show you this. So the remote we are using, moving on to that, is the Flipsky VX1, which is a really great option for a remote because it's on the cheaper end of DIY electric skateboard remotes, but it also has a ton of really cool features and it's really easy to use. The receiver wire is very simple. Just make sure that you have the version four wires because the Torque Boards ESC is a version four VESC. Ensure that the red wire is on the far right pin of the receiver, and then you'll be able to plug in the JST connector onto the UART port on the Torque ESC. The deck we used was a 30 by nine inch old school deck with a small kicktail on the end. This deck is a great option for a DIY mini board builds because its compact size makes it easy to carry around or put in backpacks. One of the things that we had to do to modify the deck was to drill extra holes for the trucks so that they would have a longer wheelbase. Once the trucks were mounted, we adjusted the motor plate angle using those four bolts that we told you to leave a little bit loose earlier. Simply use an Allen key and a wrench to do this. At this point, we started wiring all of our electronics into our enclosure, which is the M boards short enclosure that you can find on their website. We plugged all of the electronics in the exact same way that we showed in the earlier diagram when they were all out on the table. One of the things that we had to do to make this work and the key work was to drill a hole in the side of the enclosure that was the exact shape of an XT90 plug. That way we could hot glue it in and provide access to the loop key so that the board could turn on. To make a hole for the loop key, we just made a bunch of holes using our drill. We held the XT90 in place by placing a bunch of hot glue around the edges of the keyhole. To recap the wiring of the electronics, we first have the battery, which goes into the female XT90 on the loop key. Coming out of the male connector in the loop key, we then plug in the VESC. The three phase wires from the VESC then plug into the three phase wires on the motor, and then the sensor wire on the VESC goes into the motor sensor wire. To secure everything inside of the enclosure, we use these sticky Velcro strips with some 3M adhesive on one side, and some velcro on the other. We have found velcro to be a really great option for mounting things in your enclosure, that way you can take it out easily, but it's also held in securely. Another important thing to do for the wiring of the remote is to take the white wire coming from the receiver and solder it to the positive terminal of your battery. The next step is to wire in the charge port into your battery, which is included with all M boards packs. Simply connect the two two pin JST connectors together and your charge port is wired in. So that you can access the charge port from the exterior of the enclosure, you'll need to drill a hole in the side of the enclosure using a bit that's the exact same diameter as your charge port. You'll then be able to thread your charge port through the hole you just made and secure it into place using some sort of adhesive like glue. You can then connect the two two pin JST connectors. With everything mounted in place, we use VESC tool 2.03 to connect to our VESC and program it. This is a crucial step and we'll have a tutorial with the card linked in the top right corner right here on a video we made on how to program your VESC. To test that everything works, we turned on the remote, turned on the board, see if it paired, and then if the motor spins, you're good to go and seal up the enclosure. By this point, we had already mounted both sets of trucks to the deck and all was left was to make the holes for the enclosure to be mounted to the deck. To do this, we used some threaded nut inserts, which we started by drilling a hole the diameter of the insert through the deck. 
Once we did this, we drilled the nut insert into the deck so that a screw could go through the enclosure into the nut insert and there'd be no visible nuts anywhere on the enclosure. We repeated the process three more times so that there was a bolt in all four corners of the enclosure. To finish this board off, we unmounted everything and then applied this clear grip tape to the top of the deck. That way all of the nut inserts would be covered. We then cut it out to the shape of the deck so that it looked clean and nice. After we did this, we mounted everything back onto the deck and the board was done. And this is what the finished project looked like. A compact mini DIY electric skateboard with plenty of power, but for not an extreme price. I was really surprised about how much I liked the final outcome of this board. As a college student heading to school later this fall, having a short board like this is going to be something that's really crucial so I don't have to lug around our huge 30 pound boards all the time. This thing is great for small commutes, just traveling around or cruising around your neighborhood if you just want a small compact electric skateboard that you can build as a hobby and ride around for fun. I would definitely consider this build more of a beginner build for people that are looking for a beginner board. This thing is going to have nowhere near as much power as some of the other DIY builds that you can do, but it's perfect for those looking for a mini electric skateboard with decent power to get you around places that you want, but not so much that you're just thrill seeking on this. It really is more of a commuting device that you can use to get around places. This board also isn't a perfect DIY electric skateboard. There are several things that I would change to this board having built it recently. The first thing that I would change is adding some riser pads. This deck is so short and not really intended for these big wheels that adding some quarter inch riser pads will make a world's difference in eliminating wheel bite. Another thing, like I mentioned earlier, is changing the mount. An idler tensioner mount is a high quality mount that's not really needed on a build like this, so if I were to do it again, I'd just buy a standard Boardnamics caliber mount because it's easier to adjust the belt tension and also easier to mount while taking less space on the underside of the deck, eliminating the need for us to have to drill those extra truck holes when mounting the trucks to the deck. The final thing that I would change is the battery. While well, a 6S2P is a great beginner battery that will provide a good amount of speed and range for beginners, it's not gonna be enough for someone like us that still wants a short board but wants a little bit of higher end specs. For this, I'd upgrade for just $100 more and get a 10S2P 30Q pack which will get nearly double the speed and double the range. Having pointed out all of these flaws, I still have to say that this is a phenomenal beginner board that even we have fun riding after having ridden some pretty serious electric skateboards. So if you're looking for a great compact DIY mini electric skateboard, this is gonna be a super fun build that's lots of fun to ride and is super convenient if you're commuting around places that you need to carry it. So let us know what you think of this DIY electric mini shortboard down in the comments below so we can make any adjustments or improvements for the future if we're making more of this board. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, show us some love by leaving us a like down below and subscribing to us for more awesome DIY electric skateboard content. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.